Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi ta'ala wa barakatuh. Peace be upon everyone. Welcome back to my channel. So today we're going to continue the series on chain rule. And we're going to be working on episode 2 of the series. And just to give you like a brief um, information on episode 1. In episode 1 we talked about the introduction to chain rule. And how we apply the chain rule to functions and when we do apply that we have to understand what the forms of a function can look like or can take so that we can know which differentiation rule to use and in this case i showed you the different um forms and which are two the first episode one video talked more about one form you can take and episode two is going to be talking about the second form you can take so episode one focused on teaching you how to solve a particular function that takes this form right here f of x all of this raised to the power of n so it was i i went into detail on how to solve a particular function or derive a particular function that takes this form using the chain rule which is just the degree of the outer function times the degree of the inner function where the outer function i said was f of x raised to the power n and the inner function, which is the out function. And then the inner function I said was just f of x by itself. That's the inner function. So I did a long explanation and a detailed explanation for that. But in this video, we're not going to be focused on that. We're going to be focusing on the second form, right? The second form I said in episode one, which I'm going to repeat here, is going to take this form here, f of g of x, right? And this is basically what the function will look like. So therefore, the outer function will be the whole thing, f of g of x. This is the outer function. And then the inner function will just be g of x by itself. So in this video, we're going to be dealing with um, the, the, the second form. And I'm going to give you a whole bunch of examples and just basically give you the proper details so that you can understand what is going on. Because if you've not watched episode one of this series, I highly, highly recommend you to watch it because it's easier for you to process this particular video, the episode two of the video. And if you've not watched my other videos and you're struggling with a particular thing, please go watch them because I believe they'll be really helpful because I'm one of those tutors that actually goes into detail in order for you to be confident even outside of tutoring lessons or, or classes. So let's start. Now, okay, so now the first thing I want you to know is whenever you have the form that looks like this, the second form that a, a function can take whenever you need to derive using the chain rule, which is f of g of x, this is the form, right? Now, we said f of g of x is the outer function. Now g of x by itself is the inner function. Right? And what does that mean? If I say that this is the case, that means that when we're supposed to derive or differentiate a particular function that we're given, so we differentiate with respect to x because the variable that we're using to do the differentiation is going to be in form of x, so it's going to be d over dx. So this is x here is the variable, while g of x is the function, and f of g of x another function. So g of x is the function within the outer function that is f of g of x. So now, now let's imagine that we're going to differentiate it, right? So we have f of g of x. And now, the thing you need to know is application of chain rule just basically involves you having, you doing the derivative of the outer function and also doing the derivative of the inner function separately and then multiplying both of them together. That is literally what chain rule is. I talked about this in my episode one video. So chain rule just involves differentiation of the outer function, right? The or deriving the after function, deriving 
outer function and also deriving inner function inner function and then you multiply the values you get from both um differentiations or of of the both differentiation of each one of them and then when you multiply that you're going to get the answer to the initial question now you also do the derivative of the inner of the outer function so here the derivative of the outer function is f prime of g of x right multiplied by the derivative of the inner function which is g prime of x so now you might be wondering okay what is prime for those of you who do not know whenever you are using ddx right here can be used to say something is being differentiated right the function is being differentiated this prime right here and this prime right here is another way of saying something is being differentiated so just like i have ddx f of g of x i could also write this as f of g of x and i'll do this and I'll say prime. This is also the same thing as saying e of dx. So I'm using prime in this particular case in order for you to be able to um, see it properly without too many x's and dx's at a particular time. But if I just put like an like a, a <laughs> upside down comma at the top, then it's something that will be easier for you to see. You know. So this is it. And something that is important for you to know, like I said. The derivative of the outer function times the derivative of the inner function that is really what involves what is involved in the application of the chain rule so here we have the derivative of outer function remember here i said f of g of x is outer function right now f prime of g of x is the derivative of outer function now g of x by itself i said is the inner function right now g prime of x is going to be the derivative of the inner function so now that we have that clear i can now explain to you um when we're going to be seeing a whole bunch of the kind of questions that you should expect whenever you're doing using this form whenever you're giving questions in this f of d of x i will tell you to be honest that you're gonna expect to see many of these logarithmic functions okay logarithmic functions say ln of x squared plus four right or you should also expect to see trigonometric functions which could look like say sine of cosine of x so whenever you you get this form right this form you should know that examples of this type of form so actual functions you like you being given a function in an exam or in uh in class or in a test they will look like this they literally will look like this they will look like this and they are taking this form so when you see questions like this and questions like this that I'm using like the um yellow arrows to point out just know that you're supposed to apply the chain rule to differentiate functions like this so expect trigonometric functions and a lot of natural logarithmic functions to be able to help you so now before we get into the work for today I need to let you know some general differentiation values um like I guess like I would say like a, a page of formula sheet so that when you start solving problems you find it easier. Shall we? So when we have sine x, right? This is a trigonometric function. We will say the derivative of sine x right here. This is equals to cosine x. Okay, now we have cosine x, right? This is another important trigonometric, I guess, function. So you have d dx, right? And okay, now what is the um, derivative of cosine x, you may ask? That is negative sine x. I'm giving you all of this. Um, 
in order for you to like you know really learn them so many times in a way that you actually memorize them because there is a mass to each solving each one of this stuff so now that we've done this now we go to the third one tangent x or tan x that would be b dx okay so now what is the derivative of tan x right the of tan x is basically secant square x. Now, you may be wondering how did we get this? It's going to be in another video how you solve the derivative of tan x and the derivative of cotangent x and the derivative of secant x and cosecant x. I can show you how to solve it in another video when we're going to be studying product rule, but it is not something you need to learn when you're learning chain rule, which is what this video is about. So you guys should watch out for my product rule and watch my product rule that videos that involve trigonometric functions, and I'm going to explain to you how they actually get certain values to be the different shaded or derivative value of of a, a trigonometric function to get something else, I can give you like a breakdown information and explanation of how that's done in the product rule video, of course. So now you have cotangent x. You may be wondering, okay, the area of cotangent x, what is that? It is cotangent x, and you have that to be negative cosecant square x. Okay? By the way, we're going to be coming back and forth to this page you know, whenever we start like solving problems. So now we have secant x. The derivative of secant x is it's going to be secant x tangent x. This is the answer. And then I believe this is called cosecant x and when you do the derivative of cosecant x that will be negative cosecant x cotangent x so please just write this down in your notes and get like a formula sheet that you have this because it will be good for you to practice so many times with it so you can get used to it which is going to be what we'll be doing this video so that's it. So now, let us start. Now you may be wondering, okay, how do I apply the chain rule to what we've just done at the back? And yeah, how do I apply the chain rule to say sine x? Okay, so now this sine x now, even though when you go online, and go on Google and you Google basically um, sine x cosine x what is the derivative and you get like a chart or a data page or a formula sheet or whatever they're just going to give you the straight up answer to be cosine x just like we have right here but it's important for you to know that this sine x and the derivative of the sine x was gotten through something called a chain rule and in this case here the outer function remember what we've been talking about for like forever that this is going to be f of g of x this is a function so sine x by itself is a function where f of g of x is the sine of x and then g of x is just x by itself so this is why sine x is actually the outer function and cosine is the basically the inner function right and c so now let's do the derivative of sine x so so what did we say derivative of the outer function multiplied by derivative of the inner function so that's going to be sine prime of x okay multiplied by the derivative of x by itself right so what is the derivative of sine of x or sine prime of x we're gonna have that to be cosine which is the derivative of just sine by itself the derivative of just sine by itself just this thing right here but then we can't just like kick out x x has to still be here right 
because the area of the sign or sign by itself is cosine and then there is the x here we don't throw this x away instead we differentiate x further which is what is going on right here and then we now get it and multiply so cosine times what is the area of x what did you say the derivative of x was do you remember you already know this because this is one of the easiest things the of a variable by itself x or a variable say the variable is r or the variable say we say of the variable is m by itself it's always going to be equals one the rate of x is one the rate of two x for example is two the rate of three x is going to be three so we already know this to be one that's why the derivative of sine x or whenever we derive sine x we get that to be cosine x because cosine x times 1 is basically cosine x that's where you get the answer and you can get the exact same thing too um so that is basically what this is to be honest with you and now that we've done that let's go to the next page and i can show you how with a different question so hey let's do this question so now I have basically given you like a, I think a strong introduction for all the rest for the main thing. And now we're going to be focusing on trigonometric functions. Um, and then differentiating trigonometric functions using chain rule because this particular form right here, f of g of x is really highly used, um, highly seen in trigonometric function whenever we're supposed to apply the chain rule. So now let's go on with this gorgeous question right here, which is cosine of x squared. So that would be f. Now you know that it takes the form of f of g of x, where f of g of x is the outer function, and then g of x is the inner function, which I'll write as inner func, and this one will be the outer func. So now pause this video and think, okay, now that I know this. How can I apply this knowledge to the actual question cosine of x squared? Okay, now we're back. So we have cosine of x squared to be cosine of x squared to be what? This is the outer function, and the inner function is going to be x squared. That will be the inner function okay so now we have d over dx of f of g of x just repeating what we've done before is going to be f prime of g of x multiplied by g prime of x right now that we've done that we have d over dx now that we basically write this is the derivative of the outer function right here and the derivative of the inner function right here. Make sure you make it good notes so that it's easier for you whenever you have to do a review. So now we have cosine of x squared. So guess what? Let's start the derivative deriving this. So you have this to be cosine like prime of x squared okay because we're just going to be deriving cosine multiplied by the derivative of the inner function which is x squared prime okay so now we have what did we know as the derivative of cosine wow the derivative of cosine is negative sine so we're just gonna have negative sine hmm. we have this g of x here what else can we do we're just gonna drop it down right just gonna drop it down and it's gonna be x squared multiplied by now you may be wondering why do we always drop it down well we have to drop it down because we're deriving the outer function because if the time to derive the inner function is going to come which is why it's gonna be here the degree of the inner function would be what is the degree of um, x squared if you if like at the time now that you're doing chain rule, you already would have understood the power rule, I hope. And this is just going to be dropping down the exponent of 
of x. In this case, the exponent of x is 2. So you have 2x and then you decrease that exponent of x, which is this one here, by 1. So 2 minus 1. So our answer is going to be negative sine of x squared to multiplied by equals to multiplied by 2x multiplied by 2x and we can also write this as negative 2x sine x squared so this is your answer this is literally your answer say we're giving another question and this is the second question 2 over sorry uh, this second question number 2 which would be sine 4x to the fifth, right? We have sine 4x to the fifth and we're told to derive. Guess what? It takes the form, second form, and we realize that we have to apply to chain rule to this. And this is the form it takes. It takes the f of g of x, right? So here we know f of g of x is the outer function and g of x is the inner function. And then we can just is that knowledge and apply to the question here. So f of g of x is going to be sine of 4x to the fifth is equals, equals g of x by itself and that is just going to be 4x to the fifth. So yay, let's start differentiating. We know the derivative of f of g of x, right? We know that to be f prime of g of x multiplied by G prime of x and now some of you students might hate consistent replication be like okay i get it here he said this is it this is it you don't have to keep writing the formula i purposely keep on writing formulas and i purposely consistently teach in a way that i break down information because i want students to basically succeed and i want you to be able to see things consistently so that when you are in an assignment, you feel more confident and more comfortable because that repetition actually helps your brain to be able to understand and grasp, grasp the information more. So that's why I'm doing this. So now d over dx of sine for x to the fifth. So now this is going to be sine prime of 4x to the fifth, right, multiplied by inner function and we know the inner function to be for x to the fifth prime what is the derivative of sine what did we say it was again oh my gosh i need to remember oh the derivative of sine we said to be cosine so we just put cosine here and guess what we just dropped down for x to the fifth here because we're only deriving the actual function and we're not going to do anything to the inner function yet. And then we care about the inner function right here. So now we have to derive this. Remember the power rule. I'm going to even put it at some corner. So now I'll use the yellow to explain it. So the power rule just involves like whenever you're giving a variable raised to the power of n, where n is some number that is not equals to zero. So n is a non-zero number so n can be 50 1 billion 2004 1 n can be all of that it could even be a fraction or it could be a decimal it's not equal to zero so n can be 2.5 n can be um 2 over 3 we just don't want n to be zero while x is the main variable when you do the differentiation of this so x raised to the power n prime is the same thing as doing as getting n so you have to bring n down to the front of x so you end up with n x right and then that same n minus one so that exponent n is going to be reduced by one so four times five right x raised to the power five minus one that's just a brief refresher for power rule so you end up with cosine for x to the fifth times 20x to the fourth guess what you can also rewrite the gorgeous and it could be 20x to the fourth cosine 4x to the fifth so now this is the answer this is the trade the answer so if you 
to understand you what's going on so far make sure you hit the subscribe button but i'm not even quite done yet and one thing i want you guys to know is i'm teaching you this with the breakdown information but i'm also going to do the exact same problems on episode three of this um series and this time around i'm going to be doing this exact same problems using use substitution so if you find the direct method difficult i do not think you're gonna find the use substitution method difficult because the use substitution method is actually a method where we're going to be reducing the number of variables that we're using and making differentiation easy for a student that may find it difficult to be differentiating so many things at once if you're grabbing this method that's good too but i'm also going to make an episode three which is going to be the exact same problem using the use substitution method and better for you to have better understanding inshallah inshallah so that's number that's the second question so let us do another question yay <laughs> this question is going to be a little bit more difficult but well, let's go ahead so now we have cosine of sine of x and you're thinking hmm, now this is looking more complicated than what we just did it's not that complicated it's still the same information and so we have to go back to the basics what is this what is what does this look like this looks like what we've been doing all the time which is just basically f of g of x it's the same thing well, f of g of x is the outer function outer func and g of x is the inner function right so this is um important for you to know now you apply that same information here you know that the f of g of x in this case is going to be the cosine sine of x right and then g of x here is basically sine of x understand okay so this is it now go through the same process now we're supposed to derive it so the first um thing you have to do whenever you're giving a question is first of all observe the question then you identify what type of rule or what type of differentiation basically rule to be honest that you're supposed to apply in order for you to solve the question um we have to apply the chain rule in order for us to solve the function and then after that you can break it down the information to help you to start differentiating when you do that then you can start differentiating so now we've gotten to the point where we start differentiating okay i'm gonna still do the same thing f of g of x right it's going to be f prime of g of x multiplied by g prime of x and in this case you know that d over dx is of cosine of sine of x so that would be cosine prime of sine of x multiplied by sine of x or prime let's start now look is going to continue what did we say the area of cosine is of course the area of cosine we said is negative sign and guess what this is not um the degree of cosine x this is just the degree of cosine so that would be negative sign and like we said we're going to drop out whatever is into whatever g of x is we're going to drop it down when we are differentiating the outer function first so we're just going to have negative sign sine of x because g of x is the inner function and when you're differentiating the inner function you're supposed to leave the inner function alone then you go on to differentiate the outer function so in this it was the differentiation of sine of x which is the inner function and we know that to be cosine x Yay. so cosine x and voila now your answer is going to be negative because now we're multiplying both answers negative cosine of x so i brought this one forward and i put the negative because we want to um, write it down in neat fashion sine of x this is your answer this is exactly your answer or you can also have your answer to write it like this it doesn't really matter it's now used you can end up doing negative sine sine of x right and then just have cosine of x whichever 
way you plan on doing you can do it this way or or you can do it this way but i prefer the it looking like this so that stuff from the back can come forward so you remember to write it down and then you want to write something that was at the differentiated at the front so this is basically the differentiation of this now let's go to another problem please don't forget what i said please watch the episode 3 video on how to do the substitution so now this is the next question we have sine sine of x yay this basically follows the rule or sorry to follows the form f of g of x so therefore we can apply the chain rule and in this case we know f of g of x and we also know g of x right f of g of x is the outer function and g of x by itself is the inner function so therefore in this particular case we know that f of g of x is going to be is going to be sine sine of x and g of x is going to be just sine of x right here i hope this is becoming easier for you to understand if this is becoming easier for you to understand please do not forget to subscribe and do not forget to like and share with your classmates that may be struggling or just basically share with anybody you think that needs it I think it's very, very important for us to learn more and to strive towards success because I know math is quite difficult for people, but to be honest, if you keep putting in the effort and look for someone who can break down the information for you, you realize like this is stuff that isn't that difficult to be honest. So we have this, so now let's start solving. So we have f of g of x and you have f prime of g of x times g prime of x right so we have d dx f of g of x oh i'm so sorry this is a mistake i don't know i just was copying what that all that the top now i'm supposed to actually put um the stuff we're actually supposed to be doing so that's going to be sine of sine x and that will be sine prime of sine x multiplied by sine x sine prime oh, i'm sorry multiplied by sine x prime so this is now the inner function right here i know there are so many sine sine stuff but this is the outer function and this is the inner function right here so we're deriving outer function and going to derive the inner function then we multiply them together like we've been doing so sine of sine is theory of sine we know that to be cosine and then we just drop down the inner function here because we're not differentiated the inner function yet so we cosine sine of x then we differentiate the um the sine x right here the inner function and that's going to be cosine of x so our answer becomes cosine x cosine sine of x or if you want to write it a different way you can also write cosine just different positions of putting maybe you put one at the front or the other at the back whatever so cosine sine of x cosine of x the exact same thing these two are exact answers you don't there's no rule in um in arranging answers in math i really do not think there's any rule that involves that if there is a rule then it's going to be specifically told to you so this is an this is now let's move to another question you know how we did cosine you know how we did sine sine of x here now we're going to do cosine cosine of x and, and now you may be thinking okay why are we like playing with trigonometric functions i want us to manipulate different trigonometric functions as many times as possible that the more you see it the more comfortable you become in whenever you're supposed to solve questions requiring you to solve um trigonometric functions using chain rule i want you to see all the different ways that we can manipulate it so that when it's time for you to start solving stuff you don't feel intimidated by a question that's one of the worst things that can ever happen to someone for someone to be feeling too intimidated that they can actually solve a question just because it's a question like there's no, there's no supposed to be a reason why. So play with the easy stuff, then you go to the medium-sized stuff, then you go to the harder stuff. 
So cosine, cosine of x. So now this fixed form, f of g of x, right? Where f of g of x is the outer function and g of x here is the inner function. And in this case, f of g of x is the entire function here, which is the outer function. So cosine, cosine of x. And then the inner function is g of x, which is going to be just this one here, the one in the yellow and red on the line. So that would be cosine of x. So same thing d over dx. f of g of x, which is going to be f prime of g of x multiplied by g prime of x. Oh, just beautiful. So this is going to be cosine prime of cosine x because like that's the outer function and we're trying to derive it multiplied by g prime of x the same thing as cosine of x and prime as we're deriving it in our function and by the way you can also even do this like there's nothing stopping you from having you know how i'm i keep saying it is blue now I keep saying, oh, g prime of x, same thing as g of x, or prime, doesn't really matter. So it's also going to also be cosine prime of x, or cosine of x, everything in bracket prime. The only thing is that you cannot do the exact same thing for f of g of x, because it messes up the way people understand, like the way positions of functions are supposed to be. If you, the teacher does it differently, just ask him if you're confused and let him explain it to you, but it's not, it's not a big deal. Anyways, so cosine of cosine of x. So what is the derivative of cosine? Let's go back to our gorgeous chart or formula page. <laughs> and that's negative sine. Okay. 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 And that's negative sine of cosine of x because we're not differentiating the inner function, so we just drop it down and then we differentiate the inner function. So if, uh, the derivative of cosine x, we know that to be just negative sine and then x. So now, now we have two negatives, negative. We already know negative times negative is just gonna make it positive. So we end up with positive here and the answer will be sine of cosine x multiplied by sine x so this is the answer or you can just you can just have sine of x sine cosine of x yay so that is it that's literally your answer so now that we've done this we're going to do another question again that involves manipulating sines and cosine and it's the very last thing we haven't touched on and this one is just going to sell the deal of um, solving cosine and sine functions using chain rule and to be honest one great thing about calculus is that we're never put in a position where like learning more and solving more is gonna bring you back like see for example now we were studying chain rule right this cosine sine and all of that and all of that stuff it's the same thing that you've seen in part, like, sorry, this same information will help you whenever you're told to start doing integration. This same thing is going to help you in implicit differentiation. It's going to help you in all forms of the different differentiation or derivative rules like product rule, quotient rule. Like, all of this is going to help you because you've just seen so many trigonometric functions being played with here. And even if you're not doing chain rule, it's going to come in handy, especially for students that are going to move on to do um, math or engineering or any of this other, like, more advanced math and phys physics and all of that stuff. It's going to be very important for you because you're going to be seeing so many of this. And if you have a good foundation of it, you don't even care. You just keep on working. So now this is the last question we're going to have that will look like this. So now we have sine of cosine of x, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Sine of cosine of x. Same f of g of x style where f of, this is where the f is, this is where the cosine x is, is the g of x. 
which is the outer function and then f of g of x the outer function and g of x is the inner function right so now in this case outer function here which is f of g of x is the entire thing which is sine of cosine of x and then g of x is the inner function which is just cosine of x so now that we've done this now go to the next one which is b over dx sine of cosine of x you see this time around i skip f of g of x like the breakdown information now we're just going straight to it because we've done this so many times you can just do the math immediately and if you need more time please just write this whole thing right here all the time before solving the question so that it serves as a guide in case you make any mistakes you can use it to go back to your work so now we have sine of prime of cosine of x right multiplied by cosine of x all this prime hey so what is the derivative of sine x again? What did we say that was? It's going to be cosine. And then you have, you just drop down whatever is in the inner function, g of x here. Because since we're differentiating the outer function, we, can, we, we don't do anything to the inner function, so we drop this cosine x here. Multiply by what's the derivative of cosine x again? What did you hear you say? Oh yeah, sine x. So, negative sine x actually. So anyways, so you have negative sine of x cosine of cosine of x this is your answer this is the jury answer you can see the only step i skip was writing out f prime of g of x and prime of g of x you can always write that down especially if you're like a, a student in math trying to get used to how things are supposed to be set up i would advise you to be more thorough in your approach and more thorough in your steps so we have negative sine cosine of cosine x, yeah, or you can just write cosine of cosine of x. Oh, let's not forget the minus here. Sine of x. Okay, so now we're going to do a problem that is not too easy. And to be honest with you, I believe this problem will be more suited for um something called um for those of you who don't know, it's um something called chain rule. Sorry, I said chain rule. Something called um u substitution would be great for a question like this. But you can also do it with this direct method. So I'm gonna introduce you to something different. So you have tan gen sine of x to the fourth. Wow. Okay, before we wait, first let's just go back and do a refresher. First thing I did was I broke down simple sine x, right? Sine x out of function by x itself in our function. I did that. Then I increased it to this type of question where you have like um, x squared, so which is more complicated by, than x. Then I included a more complicated higher value that where the x itself had a coefficient within the bracket. Then I went to function within the function. Sorry. Well, then I went to trigonometric function within a trigonometric function, right? Then I went ahead to play around with this for sine and a number and something where it's the trigonometric function, you know, actually, uh, x variable with a high power within a trigonometric function and all of that is within another trigonometric function. So now, this introduces you to know that here we don't just have f of g of x, instead we have f of g of h of x oh yeah with another bracket where this is basically a function given and we can use chain rule that's why it's called chain rule a chain you just keep on breaking down the chain and breaking down the chain until there's nothing else to break down that is it so now f of g of x now let's start i'm going to work on you knowing what is going on so now you might be thinking here what is the inner function what is the outer function and what and now I'm really, really confused. First, you can look at it this way. You can look at as look at it as okay. Yeah, they really give us this problem. So, what is the inner function? Tan sine of x of four. You can look at this tan sine of x of four as the outer function, right? 
and that's say the outer function here would be tan sine of x of fourth and then this outer function you might be like okay what is the inner function of this inner function would be sine of x of four but then again x of sine of x of x to the fourth is not <laughs> is not well broken down there is still something that can be done to break this down further so now we bring this back here and we have the new outer function to be sine of x to the fourth and then the inner function to be x to the fourth so now in green right here we can now show you what each and every, each and everything so let's start with h of x let's always start from the inner before we start going to the outer or you can do it both ways it all depends on how you see things and how you understand things so h of x is going to be oh yeah h of x is going to be underlined in black that's going to be x to the fourth now g of h of x is going to be sine of of x to the fourth and then f of g of h of x is just basically the tangent goes to tangent sine of x to the fourth e and that is it so now let's go to the solution so we have this to be d over dx of f of g of h of x right and then this is where you end up with again i first of all f the f prime of g of h of x because don't forget whenever you're focusing on the outer function at first you're going to imagine g of h of x as the inner function just like you can see right here you imagine all of this here is an inner function right you did that that is the same thing as g of h of x in this particular situation then we multiply that answer by our inner function which is g prime of h of x since we're doing um differentiation it's gonna be g prime of h of x but guess what <laughs> this is stuff here it's still a chain so if we're gonna consistently do follow the rule of chain rule we gotta break it down from further so we have multiplied by h prime voila this is it so now what was our question again tan sine x to the fourth and all of that stuff tan sine x to the fourth right okay tan sine x to the fourth this is going to be tan sine x to the fourth we already have like a good understanding of this so that's going to be tangent prime sine x to the fourth multiplied by g prime h of x so g prime of h of x will be sine prime x to the fourth right because f prime g of h of x is tan prime sine x to the fourth and g, sorry f of f prime g of h of x is tan prime sine of x to the fourth now here g prime h of x is simply as sine prime of x to the fourth multiplied by h prime of x which is just going to be x to the fourth prime so tan prime sine of x to the fourth now you have this so now what is the differentiation of tangent again guys do you remember let's go to that page wow okay you know what so tan of x is secant square x okay that's the case for those of you who might be wondering where it is it's right here this is it right here this is a differentiated value of tan of x and we have the uh, and just get to our page hey so that will be secant squared now what is did we say is gonna happen since we've already derived the outer function and since we're dealing with the inner function although we're just focusing on outer function we're gonna have to leave the inner function alone within 
differentiated alpha function value. And keep it in a bracket. So sine of x to the fourth. Okay. So now that is has been differentiated. Multiply by sine prime of x to the fourth. What do you say the degree of sine is again? Hmm. Degree of sine is cosine of x. Degree of sine is cosine, so that would be cosine. And you know x to the fourth is in our function in this particular case, as I'm going to do is a curly bracket, or upside down bracket, and that's x to the fourth. So we're forced to not do anything to it. We're going to leave it within this. So now we focus on prime of x to the fourth. So now we multiply by x to the fourth. Now we apply the power rule as I showed you what the power rule is earlier. Which is this whole thing here in uh, a green box? So that one. So now that we're going to differentiate that, we have we drop that down to be four coming in front of x. That will be four here, four minus one. So our answer becomes second square sine of x to the fourth. Multiplied by cosine of x to the fourth, multiplied by 4x cubed. So now, 4x cubed cosine of x to the fourth, secant squared sine of x to the fourth. So this is your answer. So this is basically, um, a good strong to an extent. I feel like this is a good introduction or episode two of the introduction to chain rule series. I know some people might prefer videos to be shorter, but I think that to properly teach people, you have to make it like a lot, make it into a lecture based content rather than just teaching them like, oh, I'm just gonna make a video, a short video and teach you just one example and then you don't understand the complexities in different questions except when you're faced with an actual question. It'd be good for you to focus on learning so that your exam does not become a huge test for you, you know. You should have, have more um, experience with different questions. So when you get to the exam hall, the, question does, the exam does not feel like I should have spent more time on assignments or I should have spent more time on other things that could have helped me to do better. So this is really where I want to stop the video. I think that you should look for different questions to help you um and you should also play with um the chat that's why i gave you the chat please play with the chats like the chats is so helpful i'm talking about this chat here and look for you know different ways a question can look like i already gave you a tan x blah 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 question you can that way you i'll play with some other questions and um just manipulate questions and if you're concerned and you don't know whether you have the answers right after you've broken down the information all you just have to do is go online and look for um differentiation calculators and just make up a question with trigonometric functions that you need to apply chain rule in and put that question in a uh in a in an online calculator for you to see if your work is good so so you can form up cotegians um, cosine of 4x to the 7th. This is a question that you can form up and, and let me even make a bunch of questions right now. I advise you guys to do it by yourself and using all the help that you've seen in this video. And when you do that, look for, look for um, different um, resources online, maybe from your textbook or just resources online, to be honest. And just look for those questions, answer the questions, go on online and look for a uh, differentiation calculator and use that or you can just make up questions on your own so let's say i give you cosecant um sine of x squared right try and do this question on your own um say i give you um tan of cotangent <laughs> or tan of cotangent of uh x try and do this by yourself so do these three questions i guarantee that if you can 
do them well and watch the video and understand it, I think you'll be able to handle questions like this, you'll be able to successfully um, do well in calculus one, especially in differentiation aspect, and hopefully in all the other aspects as well. So, if you like this video, I will, <laughs> I would like to say, please subscribe to my channel, and I will advise for you to look at my other um videos and see if there's anything that you're struggling with. If you have any suggestions, please put it down in the comment section, and watch out for more and more and more questions in the series, and just watch the series. I guarantee. Inshallah, it's going to be of help to you. So keep pushing, keep striving, don't give up, and wish you all the best. Assalamu alaikum.